Jeff. <clears throat> Fitzle bulb. What was that? Fitzle bulb. I have no clue. It was just a word I made up. All right. Mahogany. Make up a word. A bop. That sounded more like a scat, but okay. Right? <laughs> uh, slap happy. Slap happy. No, that's okay. That's slap happy. Okay. Yeah. I hear that now. Um, <laughs> Long <laughs> turn. <laughs> Slong turn? Yeah, schlong turn. Sure. Okay. Terrence. Um, uh, I had one, but Frakes just blew it right in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Which she had to say in a very painful way. Um, uh, Vinglebrank. There you go. Cool. Uh, all words are essentially made up, so uh, we all Quiff. win. Bird. Bird. <laughs> Bird Dimmick. No. No, no. We have everything contained. There is no Dimmick. There's Just... no Dimmick. They're not real. Dimmicks? Did Florida get to you? Birds. Birds aren't real. Oh, okay. The internet got to him. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence, I'm looking at your artwork here. Which one? The one that you just posted today as of this oh. recording. The, uh, the um, I don't know. You call him Bob the Beggar, Beggar Tom, Beggar Tom. It's delightful. No, oh, thank you. But uh, I remember saying earlier this week, I would like an. Uh, you're drawing characters for all the the, the new characters for the Pathfinder Two E thing we're gonna play. I am, and, I said, and I've scrapped the last two a couple times. And stuff I feel like I'm gonna get left out again because I didn't get Ryan to draw me, and I hadn't got anybody to draw me. So I said, draw me. And when I saw that post, and I was like. <laughs> God, you really think very little of me. <laughs> oh, that's not me. <laughs> no, no, that's something I like did in like an hour. Where did you post that? Uh, the basic fantasy forum where they like oh. do community. Also posted posts on his, his Instagram oh, and his oh, Facebook. I don't follow him on Insta. Uh, when you said the basic fantasy forum, I thought that was a Discord um, server Shoot. that I had. No, 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 muted. no. It's, it's an actual forum for the game, basic fantasy. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm a tentative part of their community when somebody needs something drawn. Like I got a couple of art pieces in the, in the core book. Oh, nice. That's right. And like Morgan's Fort Adventure. I need to get back into drawing. I haven't done anything with this pad that's been sitting next to me mm-hmm. since I'm before I moved out of my last place. Draw me. Fire it up. <laughs> Okay, um, Toker, if you will send me a reference photo. I did in our, our uh, Discord already. There was a whole conversation about this. Did and you I send the one photo. of your Baldur's Gate character? I did. I yeah. sent a picture of my Baldur's Gate character and said, this is what my Baldur's Gate character looks like with me trying to make it look like me. And it makes mahogany giggle. And it's then I sent, I sent a picture of me and Ryan Brown really drunk at the map room wearing uh girls clothes and i said this is me this is a version of my warlock i see it i see it now yeah so either one of those and then do you want a blend of those two or do you want the shang sung coat yeah i'm not picky just Just draw me just like seuss yes I mean, why couldn't we just like Photoshop your head onto the Shang Tsung? I want you to work to go into this. I want some effort. It's I'm like not, a bad Photoshop is my thing. Yeah, we're yeah. just gonna we're just gonna Photoshop your head onto the Gravity Falls guy. It's fine. Uh, you know, <laughs> we no difference. <laughs> be like, where's the work? <laughs> Show your work. <laughs> Jesus. All right, now I have something. I, I have not looked at uh, any requests recently because I haven't felt like I could do anything. Hmm. But now that I have a... Uh, Too much quote, time on your hands. Quote, unquote, job <laughs> that, uh, that I can work whenever I want to. No work whatever. on it. Whatever bills and and basic food needs dictate. Yeah, yeah, that's the basic gist. The main thrust of the job is when I need money, then I work. Spoiler alert, 
I always need money. <laughs> Look, uh, I've had I had a job for 17 years that I thoroughly enjoyed. I liked everybody that I worked with. Uh, I miss it very regularly that it's this is closed. Uh, I still wouldn't go there unless there was a paycheck involved. That you know, and I mm-hmm. love that job. Mm-hmm. There is a guy that works with us. He was out of work for like six months with like a bad knee, but we did not go more than five days at a time without seeing his ass there. Yeah, I don't understand those people. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, I know your wife hates you, but come on. Surely you got other out of work friends. <laughs> you ever heard of a library? A bar? <laughs> Read a book, anything. Yeah, I uh, even my most favoriteest job that I've ever worked was horrible. <laughs> it's the opposite of pizza. Even the worst pizza I've ever had was still decent. I was trying to think of a job that was the opposite yeah. of pizza. <laughs> Oh, like soup. thinking about jobs soup. and pizza like i learned pretty early to not like i the first time i got a job at a place because i liked the food and then i was like oh man now i can't come here anymore right <laughs> like I, it's over it's over because i'm not coming here on my day off because i freaking work here and i'm never going to pay full price for the food again because I got it at half price now or whatever, you know, like you can now always that's eat what it's worth. You work. Yeah. So, so it's over. So you work somewhere where you're like, eh, I could take it a little bit. I think employees at food service industries should only pay for food at the cost of the ingredients. Yeah. That's what it should be. Feels like it's company should, it, it shouldn't be that difficult. But the I feel like either that or you profit. get a shift meal because if you don't do that, then they're either gonna they're gonna steal food from you because they do. can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like so just feed them. Mm-hmm. And then a shift meal, because if you want to get into the cost of the food, you're also having to pay somebody to make it. Make it yourself. Well, I'm, I'm just saying. Really no, you're no, on the clock saying, there. Like, part of the cost of the food is the 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 preparation of the food, yeah. mm-hmm. not just the ingredients. So just give somebody a free fucking meal. That's yeah. I mean it's you know. Yeah. Most places a uh, pizza's ten dollars. It costs three dollars to feed somebody that pizza. Yeah. That's basic whatever. So you can either give them a three dollar pizza or they're gonna steal twenty dollars worth of pizza. Oh yeah. I mean <laughs> oh I would never be so great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Every every pizza I ever took home from Buck's Pizza when I used to work there was a legit accident. Yeah. I totally didn't have my friends call into Hooters in order to go food that they never come to get so I could take it when I got out of my shift. That never <laughs> happened. That's that literally genius. never occurred to me, and I'm angry. Yeah, that's genius. I never thought about that either. <laughs> yeah. they, One they, time. They, they decided, sorry, they decided to stop they would rather throw that food away than let someone take it home. And I raised so much hell about like about it that they let me take it home, knowing that I'm also the one that caused this situation. <laughs> 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 oh. Give me a free fucking meal. I gotta cook goddamn chicken wings and hamburgers from for fucking shitty dudes that think they're gonna fuck some Hooters chick. Let me eat a goddamn hamburger. Um, None of them are fucking you. Who the hell goes to the Hooters think they're getting laid? All of them. Alpha males. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, it's and I, I could get I could get into why Hooters is a terrible place for for quite a while, but the problem is is that the Hooters girls are trained, at least this is when I worked there in the, the, the early mid 2000s uh to flirt. They don't call it flirting, they call it, you know. Aggressive Cheer- customer service. Cheerleaders. You're America's cheerleaders. Get out there and cheer your team on. Your your table's your team. So you have to say, like, if you watch the South Park episode about raisins, most of those rules are real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anytime somebody walks within three or four feet of a Hooter Girls, you could say stuff like, oh, this place was lame until you showed up. Like, that's not like, hey, I want to suck your dick. But to a slightly buzzed dude, so that's what it sounds like. she wants to suck his dick. 
And that's why they follow up to their car and you have to chase people off with a knife. It's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you like, have that's the why knife? it's scary to be a woman in general. <laughs> chase the dude off with a chef knife. Yes. Okay. I thought you were saying they had a knife and you had to chase them off. I'm like, you don't get paid for that, man. That would be a whole different vibe of restaurant if there were just a bunch of like scantily clad women with knives. Yeah. <laughs> I go. What do you want? <clears throat> I would fucking go to that one. I know that place would make bank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that place would be packed to the gills. Also, me. terrifying goth girls with knives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're goth girls now. <laughs> yeah. So let's go all the way in. Let's go full fucking uh, like. All right, what are we calling it? Uh, let's do this. Let's house. make this. Let's make this a reality. <laughs> Jeff, you haven't said much. You get to name the place. Edgar Allan Hoes. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Frank Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't draw me. Draw that restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking proud of myself. <laughs> that was pretty good off the cuff. <laughs> yeah, I'll give that to you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Stop giggling and write the commercial for Edgar Allan Poe so we can put it into this episode. Oh my god. Okay. Oh right, we're doing an episode. Shit. I forgot. Oh, yeah. You better start right. GMing this or I'll cut you. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, I just got that text message from Jeff like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's begin, shall we? Raiders of the Lark 2.0. Sirens blare all across the dome. And you can hear um, the sounds of mustering troops, robots, difficult to tell. Uh, Essex bursts out of the, um, the room where he was ha hacking the computer and says he found a route to get you to to get you to the mainframe of the, of the dome. Um, but you're going to have to go uh, underground. And you begin following that track. Uh, basically moving through what am amounts to the side streets of the interior of the dome. It looks like, like I said, there's a, a, a pretty expansive village set up here at the bottom of the dome, in addition to all the, the facilities lining the interior walls of the dome. But you guys begin to head down the side streets towards the, the outer portion of the dome itself. Most of the people you encounter run away in fear, usually exclaiming something about, you know, Zeno's bad. <laughs> um, occasionally you find a non-security robot doing its, its rounds for whatever job it does. But they're easy to ignore, and some of them are even helpful, as they are, like I said, old, not terribly sophisticated, programmed for only one thing. And finally, you get to a doorway that leads to the interior wall of the dome itself. And after um, a brief interlude at the, at the door, you uh, trying to get it open, you, you figure the easiest way is just to blast it open. And so, after that door is blasted open, you are met with a hallway going down into the darkness. Who's taking the lead? Guys? Yeah, um... I will... You said it was a darkened hallway. Stairway, sorry, going down. Okay. And, and there's like no emergency lights or no lights running? Uh, none that you can see. I'll uh, retract my light goggles, my built in uh, cybernetic light sh shades, and I will proceed forward checking for hazards. Uh, I doubt there would be traps on this stairwell, but it's possible that they have something. All right. Uh, also looking for uh, uh, robots, uh, enemies, yada yada. Uh, 
I'll be right behind him. All righty. 29. Um, Essex, I assume you forward the... Uh, the schematics. Yeah, the... the, the Map the, route. Yeah. To everyone. And so you see... you it, it, it quickly locates you on your map. And as you are searching the hallway, you, are, you spy some... Mm. Um, sensors. Now, the sensors, you're not sure what they do. Uh, you're guessing that they're probably just a very minimal security effort. Um, you also see that there are, in fact, integrated lights into the walls, but then they probably trigger those off as well. So the lights don't come on as we go? Uh, no. They will come on as you go down, yeah. If oh. you trigger the sensors... Yeah, and it will react because the lights come on, but that will also notify the central computer that we are um on where we're at. Mm. So what he's saying is, if you want to, you can try to disable the sensors. Yeah, when I get that info, I will I will do so. I'll start <laughs> disabling the sensors as we go. Uh, giving. Giving the place a look, you see that most of the, um, the the inner workings are actually outer workings here. There are a number of tubes, pipes, and lines that connect the uh, electronic devices to one another and to their, their hubs. It's not hard to figure out which line goes to the sensors. And you can either take time to... Um, you can take time to actually deactivate them, or you can just cut the line and the power. Do we care if these uh, lights continue to work after we are gone? You planning to move in here? Fair enough. Cut the lines. All right. You begin cutting the line. And basically, once you get the knack of it, you basically just run your hand along the, the line with your knife extended and snap it every so often to um, cut the sensors free. Eventually, uh, after heading down about a um, hundred yards of, st of stairwell, you um, are back below the surface of the planet. Um, most, of the, most of the concrete walls that made up the, the bottom half of the dome have given way to hewn stone. Uh, according to your schematic, you are basically at a juncture at the end of the, um, the long hallway. You see three routes, one going towards what appears to be uh, maybe a machine shop for building uh, and maintaining tools of repair. Uh, that goes off to the uh, south, directly ahead to the west you can go um, towards the central uh, waste processing area. Um, but you see that there is a um, an active lockdown in place. Like there's, once the doors are basically, some blast doors have like completely shut down on that area. And finally, the uh, hall to the north. Um, it looks like it just opens out into the main, or the 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 various tunnels and channels that most of the the facility's waste goes down. Do we think we can um, reverse the flow of this waste and uh, drive everyone out, perhaps? Uh, flood them with shit and piss. <laughs> now these channels are big enough to walk through by the way they're like sewage sewers right uh, but I was wondering if there's like a way to reverse the pumps and have the shit come up through their bathrooms um give me an engineering somebody is, is that even a worthwhile and that's what the check uh, is for the uh 23 you're guessing that the yeah Basically, you'd have to get to the central processing area for for um, for waste. Then from there, close off all tunnels, um, all access to all tunnels, and then begin 
f- forcing the, the the waist backwards. Doable, but not fast. It's do- yeah, it would take hours. <laughs> mm, yes. Fair enough. I'm just trying to think of a way to sow some more chaos into a, a heist. You um, do see that you do still need to go to the central waste processing unit, however, because that is the most direct route to the path to the the, um, the computer core. Which has the gene information that we're here for. Correct. Or, yes. The genetic markers. Yeah, well, it has... <laughs> Yeah, it has basically, like, uh, the way to find what you're looking for. Mm, okay, so this is the next breadcrumb on the trail. Mm. <clears throat> okay, then we will shelve the shit idea for now and move forward. <clears throat> Where to? Are you going to try and force open the um, the blast door or go into the sewers? I thought we were planning to go the sewer route, weren't we? Well, it depends. Like I said, if you're willing to take the risk of basically alerting everyone to your current location by fucking with the blast door, you can do that. If you want to take the more surreptitious route through the sewers, you can do that. Well, I just think that two, two three weeks ago, whenever the sewers, we, we got to this point, we were talking about the sewers. All right. Do we want to fiddle with a different blast door to... No, fuck that. We'll just go through the sewers. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see. What do you guys use for? What do they use for? What do they use for? Um... Never mind. You guys have maps. What am I thinking? Yep. Multiple uh. attack penalties. Hmm. Nothing. Never mind. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you head to the north then, towards the sewers. This one goes uh, a little bit further down, but not too much further. Just a landing below, and um, immediately this will be in hand. All right. Immediately, all your your environmental sensors begin to go off. Um, there is a, a, a the place is awash with low level radiation, and it, you can see that it, all, it you're getting a lot of alerts for environmental contaminants. Um, and once you get down to sort of that mesh <laughs> to the bottom where like a mesh grates um, walkway is, you can see you're standing in a big hewn pipeline uh, of stone that has a lot of other pipes piping into it. And also it has a river of... uh, Radioactive (laughs) doo-doo? Well, yeah, pretty much. Basically, but you you also see a lot of like strange plasmoids sort of floating around in the water. Large, um, oblong, spheroid... Shape shifting, kind of shifting blobs of slime mm. that are basically like floating in it, like uh, pieces of kick cereal. <laughs> Thank you for not naming a cereal that I actually like. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> floating like, in a cereal, it's I like think. floating shitty. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And I'm like, oh, God damn it! I love Cinnamon <laughs> Toast Crunch. Kicks are only good if you're eating them without milk. That's true. Yeah, they're they're only good raw. Mm-hmm. Raw kicks. <laughs> raw. That's what I was going to say, but I was like, no, that's weird. That's wrong. I don't, I don't know how to describe raw. it. <laughs> that's what old Dirty Bastard was talking about. Oh, oh dude. That he likes Say it, it about kicks. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Uh, that His Reese's Puffs must be raw. <laughs> Do the spheroids appear threatening? No, they appear, according to your instrumentation, to be more radioactive. Somebody have a, um, uh, what is it? A science check for me. Life science or physical science? Whichever one chemistry is under. Probably physical science. Physical. I got a plus one to both, so. Well, take a roll if you like. I'm watching Ooh, that is a natural 19, y'all. Twenty. (laughs) Well, better than uh, my (laughs) ten. Better than my thirteen. As a person uh, concerned with environmental contaminants, you actually know what's going on here. This place is functioning on a very old, very kind of out of date system where um, it uses a an extruded biogel to uh, basically mop up. 
existing radiation and um, other contaminants. Basically, these blobs are discarded filters. They absorb as much uh, contaminants and radiation as they can. They then are um, basically released. They once they're released, the the slime, the slimy fleshy stuff gl glops together and rolls down through the um through the waste disposal and into here where they biodegrade naturally over the course of several centuries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where they're slowly digested over the course of a thousand years. You know, natural. Na well, you know, <laughs> it's Frankenstein science, but yes. Basically take a, take a sample. It, all right. Yeah, basically it's it's a it's a very old fashioned way of engineering neutral oozes that eat radiation huh. and no it's not in the book anywhere i just made the system up because i thought it would be fun uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, at any cool. rate at any rate uh the walkways are ahead and you can see the path clearly laid out for you on your map and um begin heading that way but what the map does not reveal to you is anything that is out there um, beyond just the path itself. So as you're heading along, the the walkways, like I said, they are, you know, that graded metal that you can see down below you with? Mm -hmm. Metal grates? Yes, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> the thing you just described, yes. <laughs> Thank you uh, for clearing that up for everyone. <laughs> that's why I'm here. If I can be pedantic. Hey, that wasn't being pedantic. Doing. That was being redundant. Right. That was being pedantic. <laughs> yes. That can be redundant to prompt some uh, pedantic. Zoom tight. <laughs> At any rate, so as you're moving away along uh, the path towards your goal, uh, one of your paths is, in fact, uh, blocked. As you uh, head down, you see that a number of the plasmoids have basically created an enormous blockage in your route <laughs> and, a, and a lot of them have sort of rolled onto the um onto the grates and have sort of sort of started to ooze through the grates but basically it, it's created a giant ooseberg that is redirecting traffic the flow of traffic and you see there are a number of maintenance robots that are defunct that have been just come down here to clear it and have been stuck But no one seems to have followed up on it. Huh. Is there a way to figure out a good way to un unstick it? Um, well, the the plas the, the ooze and the pla the plasmoids and, and things probably have a melting point. But that probably would release a lot of radiation. So if you try to blast your way through it, it may kick up the environmental radiation in the halls themselves. But it is doable. Um Otherwise, you just have to find, uh, you have to just route another map. But it clearly, like, the the blockage itself isn't basically filling the tunnels. So, obviously, there's some other flow. Okay. Check the map and try to um, reroute. All right. Go to Google Maps and say reroute. Rerouting. <laughs> this, this route is seven minutes slower. <laughs> Does it have the little green leaf next to it? So at least I know I'm saving the economy or the uh, uh, I'm about to say the economy, the uh, <laughs> ecology, the ecology. The <laughs> Think about the economy. Yeah, it just gives you like five carbon credits to spend at your leisure. I don't know. What to Ooh, <laughs> this is good for any closed CCs. Closed CCs. You mean that thing they all should be? Oh. Yeah. Actually, I ate a CC not that long ago. It's been a while since I've done that. Never tell you about when they used to throw pennies out in front of the CCs and one of them would have a mark on it so you could eat for free that oh, day. And they, yeah. they had to stop doing it because homeless people would just <laughs> hang out in front of CCs and wait for them to throw a bunch of pennies. And it was, they. it's probably not a good look. <laughs> CCs swarmed with homeless people <laughs> taking for pennies, hoping to get a free meal. I've seen that. I've seen a variation of that. But like something that you already needed to have money for, it was like gumballs printed with a "you win" on them, and if you got one of those, you got like uh, a free meal, free pizza, or whatever. 
But you still had to have a fucking quarter to try and get one. Yeah, yeah. so it's 25 <laughs> cents for the chance. Uh, but that's that's gambling, and that's wrong. Am I right? Am I right? Come on, prudes. Anyway, um... <laughs> I don't gamble because I don't have money. Ah, uh, well, that'll do it. And as soon as I can feel like I had a way to put loot boxes in this podcast. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> we'd be the we'd be the richest podcast in the world. All right. The, the podcast that discovers us, figures out how that we do it, and our way more popular would be the richest podcast. Uh, yeah. in the world. <laughs> oh wow, we should sell NFTs. Oh, <laughs> You keep bringing that up like you're joking, but deep down, I'm pretty sure you're serious. <laughs> I am not serious. If he could figure a way to actually make it work, yeah. If I get, if I could, well, that's the thing though. I, 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 <sighs> I'm an artist. Technically, I can just sell JPEGs to people, <laughs> but they, they don't do anything other than be a piece of art. <laughs> but if you're, if you're like, I don't know, if you get famous for something. Then they're worth something. So we'll just pretend you're famous and All sell right. them for monies. <laughs> yeah. uh, at any rate, so yes, you get you got to reroute and begin heading further a, a, a field, trying to find a different way through. Um, eventually, you come to a big junction, and you see the 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 route is about to take you around uh, a big blank spot on the map. It, it looks like there is some sort of security concern, and so the map has a, a blocked out area that just says do not enter. But there's a way around it, so you can either be curious or do not enter. But that's the path we need to go? Uh, no, it's not the path you need to go. It's just something very bizarre. I'm curious. He's curious. This might be like the secret that they don't want anybody to know about. You know what they say? Curiosity killed the cat. Oh, oh God, no, cat. let's not go there. I I'm from Marcus cat. over there. <laughs> yes, so Marcus, go. I choose you. <laughs> <laughs> Just slams into the wall. Like, what the fuck, <laughs> man? <laughs> uh, All what um, was it? What was it again? Sorry, it's basically to... it's basically a, a blank, a blurred spot on the map. This is do not enter. Um, after uh, Essex basically stole a uh, public schematic. Yeah. Hmm. So who knows how out of date it is and whatnot? You basically guys are routing your way along um, the information you could get without having to ask another person. But yeah. Uh, um, Essex, you said you want to have a look at that? Yeah. All right. Uh, are, you, are you going alone? Well, that's up to them. <laughs> I'm curious about it, so yeah, I want to go check it out. All right. I mean, are we on a time crunch here? Well, so you know... Loosely, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, the whole facility is out looking for you. Hmm. But I mean, it's not like down to the second that we got to get stuff done. It, there's like certain things that we need to accomplish, but um, I'm not, you know, this could be something that helps us bypass something else later on. That's why I'm just kind of curious. Right. I'll back uh, up his curiosity. Okay. <laughs> well, the two of you and whoever else. Yeah, I'll go. All right, the three oh, of you. I said I was coming a long time ago, but I think I was muted. You uh, were. I think you were too. The four of you then, five of you. Sorry. <laughs> Forgot you have an NPC with you. Um, move that way, heading towards the mysterious blurred spot on the map. Uh, the the path basically goes into a very narrow cut of rock, basically uh, and just enough space for one person at a time to move through. Um, this one has no, ba no lights, no wiring, no nothing inside of it uh, along this path. And you can see that after a, maybe a couple of yards it doesn't even have any way for like any of the sewage to flow under it's just a straight up stone rectangle all the way around you and it goes for about uh 10 yards uh and then makes an l five yards more 
till finally you come across to a utterly featureless steel door. Uh, no handle, no electronics. Hmm. Search. Right. Give it a perception. I'll assist or, you know, do my own with a 28. Yeah, yeah just do your own. Yeah, so far, 28's beaten me. Oh. Uh, me. Looking at what worst perception at. That's an actual. Okay, yeah. 20, I got 28 too. Got All right. A, I rolled a 10 plus 18. All right. Um, 10 plus 18, eight, two, two 28s, plenty enough. You see that there is, in fact, just a pair of little tiny almost invisible to the naked eye indentations on the top and um, side of the door. Just enough for a, a grown person to put one finger in one and one finger in the other. Shall we? Sounds good. Um, are you going to do the opening and I'll just do a cover for you? like have my gun out so I can cover fire just in case something's right on the other side. Sure. Okay. I thought we both had to finger the hole. No, I said a grown person can do. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'll finger the hole myself. All right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what? Sorry. Nothing. The, the door slowly goes, oh, yeah, when you open it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I lick my fingers first, then, sorry. Sorry. You hear a click after putting your fingers in. You don't even depress anything. It just, whatever's in there is so sensitive. <laughs> all, it, all it takes mm -hmm. is just obstructing um, the holes. Just a little click. Just a little click. And then the door, the metal door pushes inwards, uh, scraping against the stone. And you see um, from beneath it, something is glowing through the steel. Growing? Very, hmm? Did you say growing or glowing? Glowing. Glowing. The, um... <laughs> And uh, basically, uh, it produces a strange symbol in what you recognize vaguely as the Presleskinari kind of like this galaxy's uh, high speech, like the the noble speech that they use here, that you only see or hear infrequently every now and then on hol hollow vids, or um, you you might have heard. Um, that jackass Kreider swearing at it, swearing in it under his breath uh, in the past. But it fades quickly and the door pushes in and moves aside. Here you see what appears to be a very comfortable apartment that suddenly fills with air. That is basically, you feel a gust of wind rush into it as the door opens it. Um, very dim bluish lights cut on and you see what appears to be kind of an opulent uh office for for want of a better word um a few monitors of ancient design flicker to life all around you and you see what you might at first have mistaken for like a side table or um a liquor cabinet uh a, a number of lights Click to light, click click to life on it as well. Um, and see the top of it, the 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 flat part of this strange looking little table, or this <laughs> this sort of six footish long table, uh, about human width table, begin to slide aside. Are you going around yourself to describe a coffin? I, I am, am. Just saying coffin. <laughs> I am. I'm sitting here going coffin. It's a coffin. Coffin. Finally saying coffin. 
Because we use we use burial capsules this day yeah. and age. Most people you you might have been fucking just thrown in the dirt or <laughs> thrown out of blown out of airlocks or uh, you've never seen a burial ceremony because you just leave the corpse and run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I read a book, and I imagine most burial ceremonies in this day and age would be atomization you to save space. I don't read a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, your character doesn't read. <laughs> no. <laughs> At any rate, the the little the little the little table, the little box slides open, and then a man stands um, straight up, Nosferatu style, out of it. He appears to be a withered human, um, wearing what appears to be kind of fancy dress, in line with the facility wear that you see all around, saw all around you on the way in. Oh, hello, so, huh? I said, oh, hello. <laughs> its eyes open. <laughs> and he speaks to you. First in the um, the, the Presklesconari high tongue. And then his eyes narrow and say, Zeno, what are you doing here? How did you get here? We're just here to see if you knew about your extended car's warranty. <laughs> and we back out of the room and close the door. <laughs> um, let's see. Are you at all related to the current emperor? He, uh, he, he holds out his hands for you. His eyes widen, and I need you to make a will save, and then we'll roll initiative. That seems all backwards. No, just uh, just the person in front. That would be, yeah. that would be uh, a good. Yeah, to mock up. Yeah, I pushed the door open. Awesome. Uh, okay, that's a fourteen. Natural right. seven. Okay, Single that's all initiative. Let me get me. Natural twenty on my initiative. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, what is what's your initiative? Uh, twenty-eight. Weep ski. Um, fifteen. Hmm. I'm going to cast Swap Initiative with you. With me? And give you a 25. Okay. Right. And I'll Guys, what was your total? He walked away. All right, what was your total leaps keep then now? Now it's 25. 25. Valgorth? 15. Essex? 28. And uh, I don't know what Frank's is because he... 27. Oh, okay. 27. Do you want to hear the the first half of the Edgar Allan Ho commercial? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like you want us to hear it. Well, go ahead. Uh, give it, I want to get, get a little feedback. <clears throat> See if this is just too much. A black and gray gothic style home sits atop a dark and stormy hill. The door lets out a loud and ominous creak. At the sound, a pale-skinned, raven-haired woman in scant clothing looks up from the book she was holding. With absolute zero concern about whether you live or die, her dark painted eyes regard you. What? The woman sighs heavily as though your very existence increases her suffering. She taps the knife strap to her thigh and sneers, just you? Boom, Edgar Allan Hose. <laughs> It right. didn't sound like a commercial. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to figure out how to make that. It's like it's a visual thing, I guess. Uh. I was trying to write a script for the commercial. You're writing uh. a screenplay, not a com not the commercial. <laughs> uh, it painted a picture. That was a good job. Good description. Yeah, yeah. I kept kept waiting for the menus to pop out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's just gonna throw those on the table. 
If you want refills, get them yourself. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Essex, you are first. Hmm, okay. I hold my action. All right, your action is held. Geist, you hear a voice clanging through your skull. Mm -hmm. Destroy them, my thralls. Kill, kill them. Am I compelled to do so? I'm a dominated. Uh, I am dominated. You okay. are now an Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to use my uh, best skills and my, I've, I've got to do the things to make that happen, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, hmm. Suddenly, I... Let's see. I'm assuming that is a standard action. I pop out my holographic clones. Mm -hmm. And there are... <laughs> Two more geists on either side of me. All right. Uh, a couple of... Uh, all three of you are clipping through the wall. Remember, you guys are in a very narrow hall. <laughs> I imagine we kind of overlap each other. Yeah. And stuff. Um, Who is next okay. in order? I believe it was Weebskeep, right? Uh, okay. I bet. I'm just trying to figure out who's directly in his line of fire here. Oh, oh yeah. I was right behind him. Okay. And then as my move action, I activate my cloaking field. All right. So only my two holographic clones are, you know, wibbity wobbling and I am hard to see. Hey. Wait, way to waste the turn, turd. Uh, Essex, what are you doing? <laughs> are you doing anything yet? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so can I see the vampire? Yes, you can see him. Basically, he is standing in, in his coffin still looking shocked. Basically, this person looks like uh, an undead um, middle manager. <laughs> at one point, he was uh, at one point, he was probably, you know, like a paunchy guy who's like good and good at, at um good at paperwork and we're fighting Colin Robinson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, post on death, he's sort of slimmed down. He's gone gray in both hair and skin, but he still has that sort of like uh, officious bearing about him and he's officiously bearing his fangs. So obviously a vampire. Okay. Soul surge. <laughs> We're about to get caffeinated up in here. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Roll 17 plus 12. So 29 to hit. 29, will you? And he will take, I will also take eight points of damage from this. All right. And this does piercing damage and force to um force damage. Okay. So let's see what happens. Let's see what are undead immunities for Starfinder, bleed, death effects, disease, mind affecting effects, paralysis, poison, sleep, stunning. Oh, the usual ones. Okay. He takes fifty nine points of damage. Woo! Jesus Christ! No save. Nope. That's why um is uh no saving throw, no spell resistance. Um, I have to do a target EAC, and uh, that's it. Okay, well. Uh, so I take eight points of damage from this also. Oh, wow. What a, what a sacrifice. Oh, oh no. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Essex, Geist, Wind, Weepskeep, you go. Um, you see your friend turn around. I'm just going to give a visual clue. Uh, his eyes glow just like the vampires before, before he started activating all his... Com all his <laughs> his obvious combat abilities. Indeed, um, 
I feel like I'm going to take the chance because I knew, like, I was right behind him. Mm. And he hasn't gone anywhere. Right? Not that you know he of. Just, he just uh, did cloaking and whatever. So I'm going to I'm gonna strike out at him. All two right. times. You're two-timing him? Yeah. For EAC or KAC? EAC is all I ever target. All one right. time, one time. And it's minus four is the multiple attack penalty, yeah? Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. Now, just quickly, what is my play? So, uh, does 20 get you? No. EAC? No? No. No. Okay, then. Well, then they both miss. All right. <laughs> Uh, we see immediately begins to wait. Uh, you said 20, yeah. Um, let's see <clears throat> if the attack misses by five or less. Okay, so it doesn't even hit a figment. Bummer. All right, Valgorth, uh, a lot of fuckeries are going on. What are you doing? <clears throat> Frakes, give me a very low will save. Uh, very you have to be able to see Frakes for this. You can still see me. I'm just obscured. You are invisible. No, I'm not invisible. Oh. The cloaking field doesn't make me invisible. Okay, all right, sure. Um, oh, let me read it to you. I bend light around myself. I'm predator, but um, I bend light around myself and muffle any sounds. Uh, I nearly vanish when not moving. Even when you move, you appear only as an outline with blurry features. The cloaking field all doesn't right, make all you right, invisible, right. but it does make you, you easier. I believe you. I believe you. Yeah, I mean, it's basically Predator. Like, you can yeah. see him. <laughs> but well, if you're looking for me. Yeah. Leave you. Okay. Make a save. save. Yeah. 22. Yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, I rolled a natural 15. I said, give me a very low will save. You are supposed to lie. Yeah. Sorry, you're right. Hang on. I forgot that I wasn't rolling. Uh, I wasn't using the dice roller for that. That's another fucking 15. <laughs> you're, you're, you're off target for... Uh, you're off target, though, for... How, what level are we now? You're off target for four rounds. Okay. It would have confused you and entangled you. But, uh... Okay. You're off target. And I'm done. Don't worry. What is uh, off target again? Is that basically... I got minus two to hit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't worry. I'll make you flat-footed to me, and then I'll miss. I was going to say, what's the equivalent of flat-footed? I guess it's just flat-footed still, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, now, and I, go, I go prone in case somebody shoots at me. All right. The vampire basically leaps out of his coffin onto the wall and scampers um, basically onto the ceiling and out of everyone's, like, visual range. <laughs> A bit getting out of the view of the doorway. <laughs> Essentially, like, climbs up the wall, climbs across the ceiling. He's, he's basically fletching with the wall oh. above the doorway itself. Um, <laughs> Essex, does, does, does that lowers your AC, right? Lowers your initiative, so Geist is the first. Like, yeah. Geist, go ahead. Hmm. Okay, um... I've got Weep Skeep in front of me. Correct. Uh, Essex is... Behind her, I assume. <laughs> and then uh, Valgorth is prone behind everyone, right? Mm-hmm. All the way in the back. <laughs> okay. Watch me roll phenomenally here. I just don't understand why you only lie when it benefits you and not when it benefits the rest of us. <laughs> I, I don't lie anymore. <laughs> That's his problem. It anymore. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is probably... Do I use the dice roller? Yes. The dice roller always lets me down. So uh, 26 is not going to render you flat-footed, is it, Mahogany? What are you going against? Your level, level essentially. And we are level eight, so yes, you are not rendered flat-footed against this. Against uh, my level? It's 20 plus your level. 20 plus your level. Okay. Uh, 20 Um, plus your CR, but uh, let's just go with level for PCs. 
Weird. It's easier. But okay. And we're base so what, to base, is, right? what does CMD yeah. do? Uh, your combat maneuver defense. Uh huh. If I try to disarm you or trip you or bull rush you or grab you. Yeah. Do they okay. even have that in Path Starfinder? Yeah. It's what? your your KAC plus eight. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't render you flat footed, so you will see my blurry outline. Actually, you'll see my uh, holographic clones doing what I'm doing, which is lifting my sonic pistol at you. I believe you get an attack of opportunity. Uh. Unless we said that pistols don't trigger those. But I think Thank it's all ranged me. attacks. Yeah, it's just yeah. ranged attacks and base to base to it, unless it says otherwise. Um. So I don't think a 22 gets you, though. Correct. Okay, so here's hoping that we just swing and miss at each other the whole time. 24? 22? A, because I'm off target? That's yeah. also a miss. Phenomenal. So my my um, my Sonic Thunderstrike pistol, which I imagine is like a tone so low, we don't even hear it. You just feel the... It's the brown note. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, just, you just feel the, the bass thump. And it, it does nothing to you. I feel like we're just a couple of badasses and we're so badass that we can't even hit each other. We're just well, like we're, we're John Wickin right now. Yeah. You're, you're a monk and I'm I'm trying to fight you and you're parrying my gun. Exactly. Out of the we're, way. Just, yeah. we're just having a badass off and it's we're evenly matched right now. Yeah. And we're too badass to hurt each other. Mm-hmm. All right. Um give me a, another oh, give me another will save. Actually, I don't know. Is attacking your friends against your nature? Yes. Yes, they are my friends. These I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> yeah, the, I, as the only one who might uh, spark any kind of hesitancy would be Valgorth, because I know that he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> okay. Should have dominated me. Yeah. yeah he would have <laughs> well, you aren't, front, you aren't first in line. So. <laughs> uh, 21? Uh, 21. All right, you basically resist uh, basically break off the attack awesome but you are still dominated he can still dominate he can still attempt to order you again but does that mean that i can attack him um if he doesn't get to dominate me uh yeah you can act normally this round okay okay next round so i'm basically confused yes gotcha not mechanically confused though right all right. Uh, Essex. No. Oh. No. 26, yeah. Uh-huh. He went, He was first, and then he held his action until after Frakes, and then... Yeah, I gave you 25. Okay. Okay. Essex. <laughs> I just thought he held it until after mine, that's all. No, no, Actually, no. Did you? Yeah, I did, I think. Oh, okay. Well, then go ahead. I mean, like, uh, can I tell that he's a normie for a moment? You can see his um, his figments, like, holding their head and, like, waving their gun around, like, as if, as if they're fighting the control. But that doesn't mean anything to you. <laughs> okay. You, you might be able to infer that. Go ahead and give me a... Um, Sense motive. Sense motive, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say that would be against my level as well. But that's a 21. Know. Would it be against my level? I'm not trying to hide it. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'll just make it... I'm just going to make it a flat 20 to tell what's going on. You've seen people struggling with things. but So, yeah, you can tell that he is attempting to fight the control. He may have rested control back for the moment. And how far away is El Vampiro? Uh, he is out of your sight and on the ceiling above the doorway that uh, that guy, the guy is standing in front of. Hmm. I wish that I uh, kept track of my inventory a little bit better because I remember <laughs> that at some point there were like bombs 
<laughs> and I feel like I was holding them. Uh, she drops did. bombs that she keeps on forgetting. She won't back down as the whole crowd goes wild. Yeah. We, we used um, the frag bombs on the Dapper Mammoth in the elevator shaft, so those are gone. We had sticky bombs and EMP bombs that were left. And I think we used only one of the sticky bombs and none of the EMP bombs. Hmm. But neither either, one would be good in this situation, I think. You said yeah. neither one? Neither one. Yeah, I didn't think so really either. I was gonna, like, how far away is he? Like, if I move, can I get to where, like, to be, like, it's like, okay, so I know that he went that away. Like, if I go that away, a single move, can I kind of see where he might have gone to? If you single move out th through the, through, Geist into the room, you'll be easily spottable on the ceiling above you. Um, how high up is that ceiling? You can, could I reach it, him with a 15 foot cone? Uh, yes, you would definitely be able to get him with a 15 foot cone. The ceilings from floor to ceiling here are like mm, about 20 feet. Give okay, it. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move up and I'm gonna squirt him with my ink sack. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Shoulder, Shoulder uh, chatty. I like yeah. the way you said that, and I love the way you said that. <laughs> it's gonna be like basically like a Spider-Man flip. <laughs> flip. Yeah. You put All a right. lot of emphasis. I'm gonna squirt it. <laughs> so um, oh gosh, it's really. I'm sorry, but there Wait, is a you get an ink sack. <laughs> I got an ink sack. A while back. back. Back in the day, in the summer of 76, it was a while ago, <laughs> I got it implanted when he got his bone spur oh, implanted. Oh, yeah, you were good. Yeah. Okay. And I completely forgot about it for a long time. I did. I'm sure we well, were I'm like surprised to hear about it too, it. don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I'm looking to see what it is. It's uh, what's my what's my constitution modifier? Say a quick prayer over it and it'll be a holy ink sack. There's a reflex save, so if you'll give me the reflex save, I'll figure out what the what mm -hmm. the uh, number is supposed to be. Oh, uh, the vampire's reflex save? Let's see. Yeah. Do, 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 that is you, my con. If you good go modifier. Up 30, I mean 29. So. Oh, that's going to get it. Because I think it was like an 18 or so. So he's not there? blinded. Okay. But um, I say he's covered in ink, though, and we can see him. He's not, like, hiding. I uh, know. He's very visibly inky. Mm -hmm. But if you go to your inventory and click on the ink sack, it should have your save DC um, under the special. It says how to... Oh, how, to how, to, it. how to calculate it. Yeah, 10 plus half your level plus your constitution modifier. So that's 18. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got a plus four con? I sure do. Nice. She's a she's a con caster, basically. A mm, con right. based. So I can't do that for uh, until I've taken a short rest again. Unless I spend a resolve point, but that's what I did on my turn. But he's thoroughly grossed out. Oh, resolve points. I keep forgetting about those. Would that <laughs> ink sack thing have done damage? No, it would have um okay. blinded him. It would have blinded him if he had failed. For one D four rounds. Hmm. Alright. Or uh, until he wiped his eyes by spinning an action. Now, Essex, you go. Okay. <clears throat> right in a second, I um I want to do a knowledge check on the vampire. So, um, religion sixteen. Well, there is no religion. No, I mean, I, mean, I was going to use mysticism. Yeah, that's what I mean. Imagine there's no people. <laughs> sixteen plus twenty-one. I'll so do it. Thirty-seven. <clears throat> so. I would like to know the domination. What is, on what what is how does that work? 
Mm -hmm. Um, let me back up a bit. Basically, it lasts a day per level once it's um been cast. Uh, how many kind? Of, how many times can he dominate someone? He can. Dom- oh gosh, I didn't even look. I, don't, I assume it goes once per day. Well, give him ideas, Jeff. As a standard action, hmm. He does not have um a limit on that. He could try it on anyone. But. And you're not immune to it if you succeed. Uh, you yeah. If you succeed, you're immune to it for 24 hours. Hmm. But uh, any other questions about the vampire? Well, I mean, just that's like. If there's no limit to it, that's way overpowered. I just don't see it like a num- number of times per day anywhere on this, on the thing. It's just. Um, oh, on the monster a, sheet? Yeah, it's just a gaze attack, basically, <laughs> for him. <laughs> well, it's because if you succeed at it, he can't do it again for 24 hours. And if you do it, once you do anything against your nature, you get a plus two bonus to, to deny it. And he has to spend. Um, what is it? A move action, right? To change the order? Yeah. Well, I was trying to figure out if I could dispel the domination on huh. freaks. Mm, you don't want to just do it again, though? Yeah. Let me, let me but he's not dominated. You, you. You're right. Actually, freaks, you are not dominated anymore. Oh, phenomenal. Okay, cool. I'm immune to it. Yes. For, um, for the day. Uh, they actually added some some interesting lore to this. Um, a van- uh, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, a vampire uh, can't <laughs> enter a residence unless they're invited inside, uh, you know, as usual. Can't enter an area filled with the smell of garlic, and can't voluntarily cross running water or enter the drift unless transported inside their coffin. <laughs> Oh, shit. oh, they added the drift in there, huh? That's fun. Anyway, what are you doing, Jeff, besides knowledge? Is... Okay, I'm going to actually um see if I can move past. Since Freaks is no longer Down attacking here. us, yeah. I'm going to try to move past him and then immediately figure that the vampire, the vampire went up and then disappeared. Basically, so, yeah, he went up across the ceiling out of your field of view, but you know that he's still on the ceiling still. And I figure he's like right inside, the, pretty much inside the doorway. So I am going to go in with my weapon and train it basically backwards. All right. <clears throat> and I think that is it because the knowledge check, I think, is one of my actions. All right. So uh, I moved. Okay. Okay, so that would be now it's Valgorth's go. Valgorth, uh two of your team members have moved in. Um you see that you see the guy seems to have control of himself. Um they basically move in and point immediately up toward the ceilings with uh ink attacks and gun training. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> what are you doing? How far away from the door was I? Uh let's see, I'm gonna put you let's see five, ten, fifteen, twenty feet back. Or 15 feet away from the door. If I moved up 10 feet while I'm laying on the floor, would that give me an angle to see the, the creature on the ceiling? No. Then I will uh, double move. I will I will scuttle because I'm not standing back up. Okay. I will, I will scuttle 20 feet. Okay. Into the room. You scuttle 20 feet into the room. Uh, you want you to scuttle in, you can look up. Yeah, I can see him now. You can see the vampire. Because I could crawl 10 feet with while well, prone with the yes. feet that I took. So I just wanted to make sure I, I, I don't have to move twice. So yeah, I, d- I double move. So I'm still on the floor. I mean, you could have gotten further by just standing up and moving, but but I don't want to stand up. Okay. I gotcha. And either, either way, it would have been the same. Mm. Um, your go is done then. Yeah. Okay. The, the vampire, uh, hisses at you and you see his eyes begin to glow again this time with a horrible green light and I need everybody in the room which is uh, actually let me see let me check uh, 
it's, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, everyone in the room because he cannot target everyone because Frakes is still in the hall. So everyone in the room needs to make me will save. Hmm. Do you have a bonus 17, versus twenty seven? Do you have a bonus versus fear? Add it. Um, twenty unless I have a bonus versus fear. A natural right. one. Natural one for a three. What'd you get, uh, Jeff? Uh, twenty seven. Tw- um, seventeen plus ten. All right. Well, crawly guy, I'm afraid you have the fear has taken you. Awesome. Is it cast fear? Um, what was the DC? Sixteen. Oh, son of a bitch! Bonuses. Mine. Do you have it's any... mind affecting. Uh, yes, it is. So twenty-two. All right, that's fine. Sixteen was what I need. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was. Oh, my, my highest paradox is fifteen, which would have given me a seventeen, and I'm like, the DC is going to be higher than that. Why well, waste a paradox? I should have fucking wasted the paradox. Mm. Oh well. You can waste it if you like. I don't mind you wasting it. Well, it's not a waste. I would have been that, that that would have been a success. You want to use it? I don't want to cheat. That's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point? What are these paradoxes for? If not to to, to I cheat? can, re- I can I'm just making sure you can replace them. You can replace instead of rolling the dice, you could use that number in place of rolling the dice. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Yeah, but I rolled the dice and failed so, to go back and use it. I okay. Just, I just assumed with this monster that it's the DC would be higher than 17. No, actually, his DCs are pretty low. Yeah. He's not a very high level vampire, actually. <laughs> this is a this is an on par challenge for the party. Yeah. Though I would give it that it is a hard challenge at a CR8. Um even though Jeff has already wiped out fucking Way over half his hit points. Uh, let's see. If, uh, well, they're so coming I'm, back. You I'm see, feared. Yeah, you are the feared. Uh, let's see. We're back to the top of the round, which is Geist. Geist, you 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 shake off the domination. The domination. And you I see, was out in the hallway. Yeah. You uh, see the rest of your party. Uh, you quickly sur- take stock of the situation and see that they are pointing up at the ceiling. Uh, you see Valgorth's eyes are, have grown wide with terror. Okay. Um, I will move in over Valgorth's trembling form. All right. And I will attempt a stealth trick attack at the ceiling as soon okay. as I see him. Okay. Give me a 28 DC for the... 36. All right. You have, you've got the trick off. And then this is with my Thunder Strike. Natural three. For a 13. To hit? To hit? Mm-hmm. Uh, I fucking hate the operative for that reason. <laughs> oh, two rolls in a row? Yeah, sure. You'll hit 50% of them. Let's see. Yeah, but you do a lot of damage when you hit. Yeah, when, uh, whenever so that happens. <laughs> minus dexterity, that's still not going to hit. Yeah, I figured not. Is uh, he prone? Uh, he's on the ceiling. <laughs> so he's standing uh, up on the Actually, ceiling? I don't know. Does climbing if, give you If he prone? has a climb speed, then he's not prone. No, uh, he, he doesn't have a climb speed. He has spider climb always active. I'm not sure if that's the same thing. That gives you a climb speed. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. I, I know it gives you a climb. It lets you climb, but like people with climb speeds can't climb sheer surfaces or upside down generally without like extraordinary let's, circumstance. Like, let's check out spider climb. <laughs> like, I'm not sure that I would be responsibly doing that one, doing you right by that one. Boy, that is that is a, a super obnoxious. I type in yeah, if climbing. Finder. If you have a climb speed, you can use move actions to climb slopes, walls, and other steep inclines, and okay. you don't need to attempt athletic checks to climb except in hazardous circumstances. You are not flat footed while climbing. Yep, you receive a plus eight nice. bonus to all athletic checks to climb, and can always take ten while climbing, even if distracted or threatened. Yeah. All right. Well, 
It's so obnoxious. I type in Starfinder Spider Climb and it goes, it takes me to a, a page that says, if a creature has this, they can use Spider Climb. It's like, that's what I'm trying to find the rules <laughs> yeah. for, dummy. Absolutely obnoxious. Thanks, AI. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, so uh, I guess we'll move on then. Weep Skeep, uh, your your trick attack, however, did make him flat-footed to everyone else? Just no, just to me for that one attack. Oh, jeez. These trick yeah. attacks suck. <laughs> I, ho I hope they fix this up in uh, Starfinder 2. I'm not in love with the trick attack thing. Yeah, me neither. I, I wish that if there was a if they were flanked or flat footed or off target or whatever, you could I, do I'd it. rather just have lower bonus damage to yeah. the trick attack and make it easy. Agreed. <laughs> I will say this about Spider Club: uh, he'll have to use two feet and a hand to be on the ceiling. He's basically, yeah, you, you you can't just stand up there and still wield a great sword. Or, He's not armed at all. Yeah. That's like the that's the only thing I was like, oh well at least it's say you have to use a creature must have 70% 75 percent of their limbs available to benefit from the spell. Weepskeep. Weepskeep has a question. Sure. Um what does the sonic pistol like if something does sonic damage, what what does it target? EAC or KAC? EAC. EAC. Okay. I thought so. I was going to say, oh no, I lied that one thing does target KAC, but everything targets EAC. Uh, so um, I'm going to draw my sonic pistol. You gotta go fast. And 24. It? Yeah. It does. Woo! I said woo. <laughs> Eight. Eight damage. Lovely. Damage. Uh, 1757. All right. Oh, okay. And, and I'll yell Essex. at him, get down from there. <laughs> Essex, it's your go. Yes, I am. <laughs> Going to use my chrono artillery laser and take two shots at him. All righty. First shot is a roll of 12 plus nine will be a 21. To hit. For EAC? Yeah. That'll hit. All right, that's 2d8 plus 8, so 18 points of fire damage. Oh, damn, let's we'll see. Well, he's not weak to fire, so how much was it, 18? Yeah. It's garlic fire. <laughs> he's bur he's burning a, a, an Italian dish. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, still up. Okay. So, let's see. 13 plus 9 is 22. 22 will also hit since 21 did. Yeah, well. And that was 6 plus 8, so 14 points of fire damage. 14. Still at it. You've uh, blasted him a couple times. The, bot, the creature's burning and growling and snarling and but he's still up and at him and it's Valgorth's go Valgorth how are you taking this uh this fear it's the frightened condition right it is yeah I believe so so I have to run I think so let me see let me double I mean check. it says you must flee your fight but I assume the more detailed one from Pathfinder was like you you, you had to fight if you couldn't yeah. flee you right. become panicked for one minute Oh, panicked. Panicked, panicked, panicked. That's fine. You drop all held items, you flee at top speed, you cannot take other actions. All right. There so you that's go. what I do. All right. Are you getting up or are you fleeing at top speed on your belly? I can <laughs> crawl. I run 20 <laughs> feet away. I scuttle the way I came. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that would be it. Now it's the vampire's go. No, uh, how long am I panicked? A four. minute and four. For a full minute? A minute. All right. So forever. Uh, the I'm vampire. Go smoke. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the vampire leaps off the ceiling uh, towards you, Essex. 
with its claw extended. There's not a save every round. Uh, hold on, let me double check. That's a good question. Oh, come back, come back, come back. Where are you? Spell was just spell description. Uh, frightened. One minute. <sighs> One minute. No, that, this spell's a killer. Ooh. Yep. Anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna suck. I'm gonna uh pretend like we're at the Green Dragon, and then every time this happens to the Green Dragon, I'm gonna go outside and smoke. Misunderstand. <laughs> uh, my phone is talking to me again. <laughs> Fucking <That's> big speed. <laughs> the most Uber <laughs> shit I've ever heard you say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Jeff. The um, since you've done the majority of the damage, the creature leaps off of you in a rage. Leaps at you in a rage. Uh. Attacking you, your KAC for uh, 20, wait, no, 36, geez. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Wait, wait. I, I there's no way I can double, Let me that. double check that. Is that right? Yeah, sure as shit is. 36. My KAC is 25. That's his bonus to hit. What? <laughs> <laughs> but he only gets one attack per round. Well, that's hmm. good, at least. Uh, come here. I need some D4s. That's pretty much an auto hit, no matter what. Yeah. Eight. That's, one. Uh, that's, that's uh, 22 wow. damage. Okay. And a grab. Well, go. Let me... Let me I just grab work in Starfinder. I don't know. Let me see. Is it auto grab? Yeah, that's just auto grabs. Let's see. If the creature hits with the indicated attack, usually a claw or bite, it deals normal damage, which it did. If the attack roll uh, equals or exceeds the target's KAC plus four, which is I did, mm -hmm. the creature is automatically gra automatically grapples the foe. If it exceeds the target's KAC by 13, which I'm not sure I did. No, I didn't. The creature instead auto-pins. Jesus! <laughs> Fuck! This got way worse. <laughs> uh, all right, anyway, but yes, you are grappled. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're back to the top of the round, which is Geist... Okay, uh, quick draw out my advanced Doshkari attempt another. How does he look? Does he look like he's he's not doing great? Uh, yes, he's he's leaking black blood everywhere. Basically, he's still parts of him are still on fire a little bit or smoldering. Uh, he's basically he's got a, an insane amount of bloodlust going. Am I adjacent, or do I need to move? I'm going to say you're adjacent since nobody moved that far in. Okay. Three strikes with my Doshkari advanced. All right. All at minus fours. This seems... Uh, I don't know if that's the right move. Well, or if I a KAC should... attack? Yeah, it's a KAC attack. I'm going to attempt to render him flat-footed. I'm going to do my trick attack instead. All right. 25 against his uh, grappled. Oh, that doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. But does, that doesn't beat him. So, 29 to hit. Cool. Hits. Cool. I can hit on one, but not on two. But at least I hit on one. <laughs> Did you hit? Yeah, yeah, 29. Yeah, right. How much damage? Uh, two, four, eight, plus five, 13 damage. All right. Should have triple attacked. Oh, yay. Um, let's see. We're at we're at Weepskeep. Weepskeep. Like the vampire is, is is basically on top of Essex, clawing at him, uh, trying to trying to hold pin him down to get a bite on. Um, you see, you see guys take a stab at him, or yeah, stab at him. Yep. <laughs> what are yeah. you doing? You are also adjacent for the most part. Uh -huh. Uh 
Mm -hmm. Um, in the charge action, there's an attack with that, right? Well, you're already adjacent. I don't know. Oh, I'm already adjacent. I thought I, I thought I moved over there, but okay, cool. Yay. Well, then I will just, uh, I'm going to take two attacks on this guy. Double up. Double up. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> I'm going to take two attacks on him. Uh, I'm pretty sure they both missed. I rolled a two and a seven. So 15 against EAC. Nope. No, 20, 22 is what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Oh, EAC. 20 is what you're looking for, EAC. Mm-hmm. All yeah, right. I wouldn't have hit even if I rolled, even if I didn't do two. So, what ifs? Essex, you're grabbed, grappled. Okay. So, what I want to do is. Oh, he, he's uh, off target. By the... No, never mind. I didn't hit. Never mind. Ignore me. I'm sorry. I'm going to bite him. You got, oh, that's right. You have a bite also. <laughs> and I am going to use my Reckon Fist ability, which actually lets me sacrifice a spell, and then I get 2d6 damage per spell level that I sacrifice. So okay. I'm, sac- I'm going to sacrifice a second level spell. That'll give me a plus 46 damage. Um, So let's see. I... Let's see. 20... Five to hit. That will hit. All right. You pre-bite the vampire. <laughs> Go ahead and roll your damage. So that was Katie's um KC. Yeah. Or... Okay. So let's see. All right. So that's gonna be that. So 24 uh, out of the 66 that I did, I did 24 points of damage plus another 17. So uh, 41. 41. Um, You bite into this thing very hard. Uh, It it lets out a horrifying squeal of pain. It's basically uh, like its back contorts and you can see its body begin to like start shedding little puffs of smoke. As if it is um, uh, attempting to turn into mist. Uh, your go, uh, Valgorth. No, yeah, Valgorth, you're. Are you getting up? I to... fucking hate any condition that just says you don't get to play anymore. <laughs> I know. Me too. <laughs> I don't like them. I was outside Googling it and it was like, if you're panicked, here's things your team can do. What's that? <laughs> Nothing that y'all can do. <laughs> and I still, because it's the higher level of it, at most you can throw a hologram so I don't run. Mm. But because it's the higher level of fear and I'm panicked, I wouldn't run anymore, but I would still cower for a full minute. So either way, I'm just, I'm out. <sighs> anyway, so we're on to the vampire then as you make your way further along. Um, the vampire is on its last legs so to speak and um, it basically bursts into a cloud of steam and begins heading toward its coffin as it turns into mist it turned into mist it turned into mist yes his form yeah you misty shit (laughs) <laughs> and fortunately, if I remember lore correctly, it can't just escape. It has to go back to its. Well, this one has no escape. It is trapped here because it is surrounded by flowing. <sighs> well, I'm not going to call it water, but. Great water. Liquids. Liquids. <laughs> so basically oh, it turns into mist and basically the mist fills the coffin and the coffin begins to. <laughs> slowly close and um but that that basically ends the combat for the most part but you guys basically have forced this vampire back into its coffin 
after Essex swallowed like a pint of its blood. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> swallow. <laughs> he t- yeah, he gives Essex with a mouthwash. <laughs> He's a spitter. He just confirmed. Um, can we smash the coffin? Uh, you could pry it open. He's probably you. I'll just make it easy for you. You can you can pry it open and finish him off pretty easy at this point. <laughs> I mean, he's Press Leskinar, bureaucrat. Do we care that much that they have a vampire underneath them? I thought it was like, is he on their side? <laughs> well, I mean, he or is he us. trapped? You see that there is a like a control panel here. Like there is, there he is connected to the main network here. He actually has a a, a setup. Um, how how? how well connected to the network. Yeah, that's why I was going to try to investigate because yeah, I want to investigate to see if he can actually get, if he had special access. Yeah, what's stuff. his job? Uh, well, um, while you're deciding what you're going to do with, with him in the coffin and waiting for, um, actually, let me, let me, before you guys go there, what are you guys going to do about uh, Valgrim? Because he's still basically, Trotting off into the uh, the sewers. I'll go corral him. All right, never find him of my abilities. You never, never find him ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery that will never be solved. <laughs> There's the alligator it's... alligator in the sewers. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you don't actually have to flee for the full minute just till you're away from the the bad guy. So the outside cowering. I mean. Hey. So once you see uh once you see guys show up and tell you that they won, it doesn't really end the spell. I dispel my my clones and my cloaking field, and I will offer him a cigarette as he shoots. <laughs> He's already smoking one. <laughs> Three of them like in his little lizard mouth. He's got one of those annoying vapes you use. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Instead of offering you a cigarette, I just <laughs> Hit this. All right. So okay, you haven't gone fleeing into the the unknown depths of the sewers. Got it. All right, Essex. Uh, give me a computer's check when I when you head over to his um his uh his setup. Okay. Okay. Rolled an eighteen plus eighteen to so thirty six. All right. Um. You're able to access uh, much of the um, the various systems and um, uh, goings on of the of the dome. Like you don't have access to the the central core, like as far as like editing privileges or anything like that. But you do have basically this is an this guy is an admin, but not in the computer sense. He's an administrator in the administrator sense. Like this guy basically gets sent, sent questions and you're guessing that this guy here probably was sent with the the original colony ships like mm. a an an, uh, an on hand um <laughs> administrator that oversaw probably the um the the terraforming itself and eventually this area you see that he is fed. There is a line that comes down here from the medical facilities where waste blood is sent for him. Um, but they think it goes in, of course, to the sewers. Right. And um, you 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 basically find out that this guy is here to oversee the the founding of the the planet itself. He is the guy who tells everyone here. Uh, what to do, and is also one of the um, one of the 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 administrators, the 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 the, rob- the robotic administrators that talks to the marshal. Like the marshal obviously probably doesn't know this guy is a vampire. He probably thinks he's another fucking computer. And in fact, probably everybody here thinks he's a computer at this point. But you can see that his his outline for the colony is clearly presented on a timetable. It's on a blotter on his desk. Like you can just just 
touch the screen, flip ahead like uh, a, f- a few dozen years and just see his timeline for what goes on with the colony itself until finally you just keep flipping and you see um, Purification Day where essentially they kill all the surface mutants that, that, that are doing all the work for the people that he is breeding here. Download all that information, of course. Okay. Hmm. Does he have enough authority to, like, clear us and say that we're allowed to be where we're trying to go? Um, you can, you guess you could probably do that. Like, you could probably do that from here. Like, you could probably, like, have yourself some badges printed, but you'd have to go to a different office to pick them up. <laughs> yeah, well, gets, like, you see he's got the access, but he doesn't necessarily have the equipment. Like, to get retinal mm-hmm. scans encoded to get like, you know, um, biometrics encoded that you would need to get easy by access. He could do from this computer or authorize from this computer, but the actual equipment that does it is not here. Well, if we can get authorization and then, you know, when we get to where we're going, be like, look, it's in the computer. We are authorized to be here. Check it. I will definitely now, try to use this to try to set up a back door so that when we get down to the mainframe, I'll have full access. All right. Uh, then, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Um, you can basically set yourself up with a administrator password that will get you through doors uh, without a problem. With, <laughs> Absolutely. But it will still require, you know, actually making interface. That's fine. I have a question about vampires. Sure. They can't move through... We can't move cross flowing water. What happens if we dump him out of his coffin into the flowing water? He'll take a certain amount of damage every turn till he dies. If I recall. <laughs> uh, probably easier just to cut his head off right here. Yeah, you could just do the whole steak and head cut off thing. <laughs> yeah, let's just keep it simple. All right. Look right, around you pop, for the, uh, the sharp when you pop, steak. When you pop the coffin and take one of his like very well made and beautifully carved uh, pieces of furnishing and turn it into a wooden stake. He doesn't have one on the wall from the last vampire who <laughs> he killed. He does not. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to destroy his his elegant coffee tables. Uh, Shame. <laughs> but yeah, once you pop the coffin open, his eyes snap open. He's still recovering from most of the damage, did, including the huge bite mark off his shoulder. <laughs> You see, you see him, him mouth the words, please no, as you uh, jam the um, the stake through his heart. Sorry about this. And slicing his head off is no trouble, as his skin and bones are mostly moldy cheese by this point. Uh, but yeah, you've come down here to satisfy your curiosity. You bottled a vampire and found yourself uh, opening the way a little easier toward the end of your journey. And we'll continue that journey next time. Thanks just once again. One ahead. little thing before you before you over with here. Sure, sure. Just um something else I was looking for within the computer system okay, is I know that they have like training videos and stuff that basically are, are used to culture these people. So like when they're that born, it will like indoctrinate them to the noble, you know, because these are supposed to be the noble des- uh, the descendants from the nobles. Yeah. So it's supposed to ingrain them into the culture. I wanted to get that kind of information and download it so we have a copy of it so that you can then, once we, DNA is only going to be part of this. The other part of this is the actual culture and knowing what you would need to know as a noble. All right. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff, all those indoctrination, and there's a lot of it. See, see if you can indoctrinate them that at the age of 15, they murder themselves. What? Uh oh. Hard sell. <laughs> oh no, we, we got we got the most important bit here is which which I kind of figured this was going to happen because of what what I've seen Kreider do in the past. They're going to wipe these people. These people are not going to stay. So we could like corrupt them and all that. The sheriff does not know this. So and he cared for these people. Yeah, no, I meant the nobles. If there's no. a way to uh, corrupt the nobles to, I don't know. I just don't like nobility. <laughs> Arist- aristocracy, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Oh, well, okay. That was it. 
All right. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time on um, what show is this? Raiders, Raiders of Lark. Oh, for the law. 2.0. Edgar Allan Hose. Edgar Allan Hose. Animated series. <laughs>